Welcome to Sunshine Art and Drawing. Today I'm going to be doing a bit of a different video. I was having a look into my pencil collection and trying to figure out a way to compare them. To compare which pencils are sort of like easy to use, easy to blend, and which pencils are more suited towards, you know, um, giving to the kids and letting them do colouring in, and things that you could actually use as maybe artist quality pencils and not spend too much. So I took some of my research materials here, this book and this one here, um, my mum found for me, she's always on the lookout for artist things, and this artist handbook has a whole section, it is the light kind of grey section, I remember it, here. And it talks all about coloured pencils and how to use them and things like that. So it's all in this section here, like how to use your coloured pencils and how to use your techniques, that sort of thing. But what I found really interesting was this book here. It talks about how to mix colours using coloured pencil. So I had a bit of a look at this section here, where he was showing... Um, different ways you can do just three primary colours and how mixing them together you can create like a whole range of colours. So I thought I would start off trying to do this. So um, let me show you that. So let's move this giant book out the way. And as you can see I used the Faber-Castell colours to try and replicate this. It's not perfect because I was just sort of working quickly to try and see if you could do this kind of um, I guess you would call it this kind of mixing, but use like cheap pencils because in this book he recommends that you get yourself some good quality pigmented pencils to try and do this with. But I thought, you know what, I've got at least five or six different kinds of children's pencils. Let's compare them. So first of all I did this, but I thought this would take far too long and would make an incredibly long video to test the pencils out against each other. So what I thought would might be easier is to try and do a bit smaller kind of sections, but still using three colours. So here I did with Crayola, I took six of the standard colours and then I mixed them all together. So as you can see, you can create all different colours from like a browny kind of colours to some more purpley colours and then like mixing different things together. So if you have a look at the blue and the red, you create kind of a purpley color instead of having to use purple. And if you mix like orange and red, you get this kind of more bright orange. So you can make a lot of colors really easily just by gently mixing them together. And I will show you how to do that. So it's really handy to, if you've bought like a 12 set of pencils and then you're like, oh no, I need like a lime green, but my set doesn't come with a lime green, you can experiment with mixing, say, like yellow and the regular green and you will get kind of a lime green kind of colour, as you can see here, that sort of idea. But this again is quite a large section to do for each pencil, so I thought this would also take a really long time and probably not be a very interesting video. So in the end, I thought I would go a bit smaller. And I settled on this design here. So I kind of mixed different colours together. And as you can see, you can see where they're the same. So there's no point doing a box like this because you end up with colours that are the same. And it's just repeating yourself over and over. So I thought a strip like this is perfect for making a kind of a representation of each colour set of pencils and sort of comparing them against each other. So what I've done here is I've ruled up a little bit of a box and I've got um, sort of a selection of pencils that the average person would have access to and normally a pack of 12 pencils would be between about five or ten dollars. So I tried to sort of be at that price range just to make it a bit easier if you're looking for pencils and you don't have a lot of that money to spend. And really what you're doing is you're mixing the colours together and I'm kind of making this row here. So I'll pop this book to the side and we will get started and I'll show you how to do this just on the first row and then we'll quickly move through the other rows so you can easily compare them. So first things first, let's get our Faber-Castell Classic Colours. I might put this just a little to the side because I'm a bit worried about it getting pencil marks all over it, but we'll put the pencils over here. So this is my set of the Faber-Castell Classic Colours. I think I have two or three sets mixed together in here. So there's hundreds of different colours. And then I've also got all the really, really short ones that kind of get lost at the bottom of this jar. I've just put them in a little 
jar here and these are all the tiny short ones. Eventually I guess I'll use these ones up but as you can see there's really really tiny pencils in there. They're really hard to use. But the three colours that you're going to need is you're going to need a nice bright red, a nice bright blue and a yellow. And what I'm going to try and do with this is pick the colours that Faber-Castell is calling red, yellow and blue. So this one here is colour 321. 321 is the 21 colour and 21 colour is red. It's what Faber-Castell calls red. And if you have a look at most of their Faber-Castell products, they use the same numbering system except they use a different number at the beginning. So you'll find that this 21 will be the same if you get a set of Faber-Castell um, watercolour pencils or Aquarel or anything like that. It'll still be that number. The next one I'm going to get is you need a bright blue. So I picked this blue here, which is 47, because it's a light blue, but you could pick any of the blues. So there's a whole bunch. There's this one, there's that one. And this is where it becomes a bit confusing because there are so many of the same colour, like that's 151, you know, and so on and so forth. It's hard to know, but the colour that you're looking for is this kind of, they call it sky blue. It's where it's a light blue colour because that'll just make it a bit easier. If you pick like a really deep blue, it's going to be too contrasting over the top of the colours. So a colour like this or a colour like this would be perfect. So this one is one is 347 and this one is 353 and if you have a look at them they're very similar but I'm going to go with 347 because I think that that would be the closest to a nice bright blue and then the next color we want is a yellow in Faber-Castell they have two yellows I don't even know if I have the other one anymore but they have 307 and I believe that they have 304 so you've got like a bright yellow and a lemon yellow so 307 is the colour I'm going to use. I'm also going to sharpen these up because they're obviously quite blunt. It's pretty good. So now you've got your three colours. I'll just get that dust off of my page. Let me centre this so that you can see what I'm doing. And we'll also move these jars out of the way just so we've got a bit more light. But these are all the different pencils I'm going to be testing today. And they're all listed down the side here so that you know exactly which one I'm working on. But we'll pop all these to the side just so that you've got a nice amount of brightness and you can see exactly what I'm doing. So just to make this a little bit easier to watch, I've sped this up nice and fast so you can see me completing each one of these boxes nice and quickly. But the first thing I want to mention is to press as lightly as you can. It is a lot easier to add more colour than it is to take colour away. So definitely press very lightly and it's okay if you have to do two or three layers to get the colour nice and deep as you want it. Adding extra layers is fine. So once you've done all of your blue squares and they are nice and even, grab your red colour and then pop that red colour over the top of the blue and just gently blend them together. They won't perfectly blend together because they're coloured pencils and they're really not made to do that unless you have like a blending stump. So it's okay if it's a little bit scratchy and it's okay if you have to go back with the blue a couple of times and just alternate blue, red, blue, red until you get a nice purple colour. And if it doesn't go completely purple, that might mean that the pencils aren't as good as you thought they were. So next we're going to be doing the purple, red and orange squares in red. And then we put yellow over the top of the orange square to make that red into an orange. Fill in the yellow square and then do the yellow over the top of the green, the blue in the green square to make that one nice and green. And as you can see, that's all complete there. I'm going to add a little bit more blue over the top of that purple square because it just doesn't seem quite blended to me but even though I did that a few times I wasn't able to get the color that I wanted which might mean the pencils aren't that good at blending but let's hop on to the next set so this is the Derwent Academy colors these pencils were a lot more scratchy so it was really hard to get a good solid layer of color without it coming through a lot scratchier the Faber-Castell ones in comparison were a lot softer, but these were just a bit more scratchy. So you can kind of see where I went back over it and added more layers. But still the colours blended together okay. I feel like the litmus test or the, the sort of the major thing that you look out for is whether you can blend the red into the blue. If that's kind of hard to do, 
Um, it might mean that the pencils might not do what you want them to. I found some of the sets it was really easy to do, and especially this Derwent one, it was quite difficult to get that purple from the blue and the red mixing together to look nice and solid. So here I'm doing the orange. The orange seems to be the easiest one. That always seems to blend pretty well no matter what pencils you're using, and green always seems to come out a nice colour anyway, because blue and yellow mix together to make green quite easily. It's that purple one on the end that's a bit tricky. So let's pop in the next one. These are Crayola, so they're just a basic set of your cheap Crayola pencils, the ones you get really, really cheaply at back to school time. And I've just got the red, the blue, and the yellow, and I'm popping those down. This um, set has a lot more pigment, and I noticed that I didn't even have to press hard, and a lot more pigment comes out. So as you can see, I was just sort of blunting that red one down a little bit because it was a bit too sharp and it was making lines rather than being able to colour. But you want to bring your hand far back on the pencil so it's almost leaning over a little bit and that will help with getting a very light even layer. If you press like really hard you'll end up with um, some really really strong lines that will be difficult to blend. So definitely press as light as you can. The best way I found to practice pressing lightly is to pretend that you're colouring on your, the palm of your hand. And if you can colour on the palm of your hand without hurting yourself or scratching your hand, then you're pressing lightly enough. You shouldn't feel the sharpness of the pencil on your skin if you're practising on your hand. Don't actually colour in your hand, but more pretend and practise. And these are the two that I found were the probably the best out of the ones I've got, which are the Montmartre Essential Colours and the Mikador Colour Rush. Both of those blended a lot better than the first three. The colours came out really, really deep. As you can see, I'm only doing two layers, and it's already much darker than the Faber-Castell's three layers. So some pencils will have more percentage of wax than they will pigment, and here I'm just showing you practising on your hand, just so that you can remember to press lightly. That's the biggest thing, is press as light as you can when you're colouring. It's okay if it's very, very pale, because you can add another layer on top. It's just really hard to take it away. So let's hop in and grab that yellow from the Montmartre Essential Colours, and we'll add in the lovely yellow to add those last three colours. And you can see the whole ending ended up really nice and blended. Probably my favourite ones are the Mikador Colour Rush. Although the blue is a lot darker than I would expect for a sky blue, that's what the pencil's labelled as, um, it still turned out pretty good. I think the only problem I have with the Mikador Colour Rush pencils is the outside layer of the pencil often doesn't match what colour the pencil is. So as I'm colouring with that blue, you can see that blue is much, much lighter than the outer casing of the pencil. It might be just because um, they're working off of what pigment they put in it, but when you add the wax it becomes a bit lighter, or it just could be like a manufacturing thing where that's the colour that they say is sky blue. But the Colour Rush and the Mikador ones blended beautifully. It was much, much easier. Now my wildcard entry I thought I would try were these Crayola Twistable Pencils. Now they're not crayons, they're actually pencils, and they worked fine. Like, if you want a set of pencils that maybe might cost you 3 to $5, and they're not a bad set of pencils, and they're really good for travelling, you can sharpen them just using a scrap piece of paper, you don't have to carry a sharpener and get, like, sharpening bits all through your pencil case. Really, really handy. That'd be great for school as well, because I could imagine um, if you had a project or something you had to do quickly, you don't want to have to go and find and sharpen a bunch of pencils. You can just use these. Easy, easy, easy. And they blend just as good as the Crayola pencils above. I think they're just a Crayola lead in a plastic casing. So they worked quite well. They're even a little bit softer than Crayola. So let's have a look at the finished product. I've completed all of them and I'm tipping them towards the light so that you can see how much wax is coming off of the pencils as I'm colouring. You can kind of see that shine. And that shine is from the wax of the pencils building up on the paper. Pencils work by using a small amount of wax mixed with a pigment, and the wax gets warm as the friction of the pencil rubs against the paper. It causes the wax to melt a little bit and release the pigment so that it sticks to the paper. 
And here I'm just showing you each one as it's complete and what colours I ended up using in case you want to replicate this one yourself. Strangely enough, the Crayola one turned out with the best purple, which was really surprising. So I hope this was an informative and helpful video for you in your own pencil journeys. And definitely have a look at some of my other videos. I pop a lot of pencil colouring techniques and... You guys have a fantastic and sunshiny day. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you so much for all of your support. You guys have a super sunshiny day. Thanks. Bye.